And hey, welcome back to the show. Diver Drew Livingston's the reigning NCAA champion on the one-meter springboard, but it wasn't good enough for the Texas Longhorn. He wants a team championship. And to talk about all that and more, we have Drew on the phone right now from Austin, Texas. Drew, welcome to the show. Thanks, Peter. It's nice to be here. It's good to have you. So um, tell me, freshman year, win an NCAA title. That's good stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. I mean, you, you always want that to happen, but you never expect it to happen. I just put in a lot of work, and it turned out well for me. You've got some diving in the in the family genes. Your sister was also um, a Texas Longhorn, won an NCAA championship herself. Was that uh, was that fun for you, or is there a, a sibling rivalry? I mean, there's there's always a little bit of a sibling rivalry, but you know, we we've always had each other there. We we support each other a lot, and we just had we had fun with it. She's done now. She finished uh, her college career. She's done diving, moved on to bigger and better things, but. Uh, I saw her win back in 2007 on platform, and uh, you know, ever since that time, I told myself, you know, when I get to college, it'd be sweet to uh, to win an NCAA championship myself, so we can have a nice little uh, sibling thing going. But yeah, it was it was awesome having her diving, and uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if I can if I can remember that there's a better uh, brother sister uh, tandem in the world in diving. Well, maybe they should make that a competition. I'd I'd be fine with that. I'd, I'm sure she'd come back for a few meets for that. Is she still diving, or are uh, you taking over the, the baton now for the family? No, I'm, I'm the lone Livingston diving now. She's uh, She's got a job in Austin, Texas, so I've, I, I still have at least three more years of diving. We'll see where that takes me. Well, other than NCAA stuff, obviously you are good enough to be making runs at uh, international teams. You've just come up short, though, the last couple times. Yeah, uh, yeah I, you know, back last year... Uh, I missed the Olympic team by a spot or two. Uh, yeah, that, that was, I was a little bummed from that, but at the same time, I wasn't expecting to make the team, so if I would have made it, that just would have kind of blew my mind. Uh, and then I, I came close to making the world team this year, uh, but you know that can all change next year. I've been working really hard, and hopefully it'll come around for me next year. So I've heard you're described as a powerful diver, but someone who's trying to get a little bit more graceful. I mean, how do you do that? Oh, it's it's a lot of work in and out of the water. Out of the water, you have to work on the flexibility. Usually, the, the more flexible divers are the ones that look better in the air because they can get into tighter positions and they look better. You know, the the toe points there. Uh, so it's a lot of stretching out of the water. But in the water, you I mean, you've got to be aware of everything your body is doing when you're in the just even in practice because that's that's when it transfers over. You can't not do something in practice and expect it to be there in a meet. So it's just every day knowing what you need to work on and paying close attention to everything your body is doing. And you mentioned ankle flexibility. That's also very important for swimmers and their kick. Uh, and you, you know, train there at Texas with a lot of prominent swimmers. Do you guys ever get together and actually do like ankle flexibility exercises together? Oh yeah. Uh, and my roommate last year was a freshman was a breaststroker, a freshman breaststroker. So uh, you know, he he was always wondering how to increase uh, dorsal flexibility and my ankle flexibility as a whole. So, uh, you know, at night before we go to bed, we both be working on uh, stretching out our ankles and, and making sure we help each other. I mean, even though he's, he's not a diver, I'm a diver, and he's a swimmer, uh, there, there are a few things that parallel each other in the two sports. Is there, um, might as well ask you, is there one swimmer on the team, since we are predominantly a, a swimming show, sure. that, uh, that just has the best ankle flexibility out of everyone? Man, uh... Well, my, my roommate, his name's uh, Matt Hoyland. He he came on a uh, with with not too much, you know, no, nobody really heard about him. But he dropped down. He won the 53s and the 100 breast short course. Uh, he's he worked every night, uh, you know, twice a day on just increasing his flexibility for breaststroke. And he it's just it's crazy what he can do. You can almost put his toes back to his shins. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, <laughs> well, moving on from there. Um, so Drew. I know the, the big horror story for a diver is the, the worst kind of smack you've ever had. And I know you've got a good one to tell. You want to tell it for our audience real quick? Yeah, you guys might get kicked out of this. Uh, back when I was, I think this was back when I was 15, I was diving at the Woodlands, Texas outdoors in the winter. It was about, uh, I'd say it was probably somewhere in the 50s, so it was kind of cold out. Uh, I was doing a, a twist drop 10 meter, and whenever you duck your head in the twist, you're going to spin out. Uh, I just, I guess I wasn't thinking right. Uh, I spun out, and 
the last thing I remember is looking straight up at the 10 meter, getting further and further away, and before I knew it, I landed flat on my back. Uh, I came out of the water, and I felt like I had to almost throw up, so I kind of got out of the water and went over behind the towers, and before I knew it, I was coughing up blood. Uh, you know, the next month, I had welts from my shoulders to my ankles. It, it hurt. It took me out of diving for a little bit. Uh, so it, it's a serious thing. Uh, di- diving seems like kind of a, a cupcake sport, but we, when it gets down to it, it can be very dangerous, too. Does the, do you ever get over something like that? Do you just, or is it always in the back of your mind? Oh yeah, I mean, the the best mental divers can get over it within a few hours. I mean, after I did the dive, I went back up and uh, did a similar dive right after it, so I can kind of get that out of my head. And if you if you have really uh, a really good mental game, something like that won't even phase you. And I know your coach I mean, I, there at Texas, Coach Scoggins, he's. Uh, He's uh, got a pretty famous belly flop in the Olympics. Did uh, did he share that story with you? Oh yeah, he he, he tells us every once in a while. And and the the great part uh, about that story is that he was such a tough diver mentally and physically that you know that was in the middle of his round. He came back and finished his list great on ten meters. So it wasn't the fact that he just uh, survived past that. It was the fact that he got back on the tower and finished his uh, competition. Well, you've got uh, your sophomore year coming up, and I know that um, that you want to win that team championship, and that's one of the reasons you went to Texas. So, how's the uh, the team already talking about that? Oh man, we were we were talking about that the day after we lost to Auburn this year. I mean, it it hurt for a little bit, but uh, I think I think we're gonna make a strong push this year. I think we're better than last year, and uh, you know. Swimming and diving at Texas, you always have a chance to uh, win a national team title. So this year is no different than last year. We're going to have the same expectations, and hopefully we can get it done this year. Best of luck, Drew, and thanks for coming on the show. All right, thanks, Peter. All right, that's Drew Livingston joining us on the show, and we appreciate his time. That's it for the show today. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.